You first called the Simpson home on June 13th, sometime that morning, is that correct? Yes, I did. And that was sometime about 10 o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? Yeah, my mom paged me at around about 10, 10.30. And upon hearing the news, you tried to reach someone at the Simpson home, correct? Yes, I did. And when you picked up the phone and dialed the Simpson home, did someone answer? Yes, they did. Who was that? Mark Furman. Had you known Mark Furman before June 13th? Yes, I had. When Mark Furman picked up the, the phone, tell me everything that you can recall about that conversation. First of all, what's the first thing that you asked Mark Furman? Mark. He can tell us what he said, but that's about it. Very well. What did you ask Mark Furman? I said, Mark, did OJ kill Nicole? Did you ask Mark Furman about any of the evidence? No, not at all. That was... Did you ask Mark Furman whether or not there was a suspect in mind? Yes. He, well, actually, yeah, he told me he wouldn't answer me. And he told me, Ron, you know I can't answer you. And I tried How... to persuade him, tell him, hey, it's me you're talking to. How long did you and Mark Furman talk on the phone on that day? No more than one minute. One minute? At the most. Without saying what he said, did Mark Furman explain why he was there at 10 o'clock answering the phone? So I also, I did ask him if Nicole, I asked him if she was really dead. Did Mark explain to you why he was there answering the phone at 10 o'clock a.m.? Yeah, he said he was, he was investigating. That's when he said, yes, she is dead, and he's there investigating the homicide of her and Ron. He was at Mr. Simpson's home at 10 o'clock investigating the homicide of uh, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. Right. returned later that evening. Was Mr. Simpson there when you got there? Yes, he was. And he was there with his two sisters, correct? Yes. And he was there with his two, ch his two adult children? If I'm not mistaken, I, I, if, if Arnell was there, I think she might have been in a guest house. I'm not sh sure. If, I was there for a whole week. You know, Monday through Friday, so I, some, some of the days have run into each other. Do you recall that his mother was there? Yes, she, yes, I think she was there. Yes, she was there. That was an, a, a day that was somewhat unusual, was it not? Very much, yes, it was. There were media outside the home, were there not? Yes, there was. There were helicopters circling overhead. True? True. People were inside watching different television programs, correct? No, everybody was watching the news for the most part. Different news programs? Yes. There came a time, as you've said, that Mr. Simpson retired upstairs to the bedroom. Yes, there was. And he asked you to join him, according to your version. Yes, he did. And did you and he walk up the stairs alone, or together? Together. And did you and he then walk into the bedroom together? Yes, we did. And it was during this time, while you and he were in the bedroom together, that this conversation supposedly took place? Yes, it is. Now, is it your version that Mr. Simpson told you that the police said they had found a glove? Yes, that's what he told me. Okay. And did he tell you that they had found a, a glove with blood on it? So, yeah, they said they, they said they found a bloody glove. And, and I did leave out one statement because he did, when Mr. Darden was questioning me, he did ask me, what does this mean? What does all this mean? Now... Did he tell you when he had been told that the police had found the bloody glove? I, I can't remember. 
you knew by the time of your conversation that the police had had an interview with Mr. Simpson. Yes, okay, he did, yeah, because he had come you, from downtown, right? And you correct. knew that Mr. Simpson had voluntarily gone down and spoken with the police, given a statement. That's correct. And you knew that Mr. Simpson had voluntarily returned from Chicago to Los Angeles upon learning of the deaths. That's correct. Now, is it your version that Mr. Simpson told you that they also found a, a, a cap? Is it my version? Did Mr. Simpson tell you that the police had told Simpson that they'd also found a cap? Yeah, I'm pretty, there was two items. I'm pretty sure it was a cap and a glove. Did Simpson tell you that the police had told Simpson that the police had found blood in the car? I think, yeah, I think he did. I'm not sure, I, I think he did. Well, if that statement was written in Exhibit 1000, mm -hmm. that Simpson told Leo that the police had found blood in the car, would that statement have come from you, since you're Leo? That's correct. Okay. Did Simpson tell you that the police had told Simpson that blood was found in the house, in his house? Yes, he did. Now, it's your position that Simpson asked you about DNA evidence? Yes, he did. Did Simpson ask you about regular blood sero serological evidence as well? No, he did not. Isn't it true, sir, that Simpson never asked you anything about or mentioned to you anything about a cap being found? Did he never mention it to me? Correct. No, it's not true. He Isn't didn't. it true, sir, that Simpson never said anything to you about there being blood found in the car? No, it's not true. Isn't it true, sir, that Mr. Simpson said nothing to you about blood being found in the house? No, it's not true. Isn't it true, sir, that you mentioned to Mr. Simpson that the police had found a glove on his property? I had no idea what they found in that house. Nothing. Didn't you take Mr. Simpson out to behind the, the garage to show him the area where the glove was supposedly found? This is sad, OJ, but no, <laughs> this is really sad. Your Honor, I move to strike that. Ladies and gentlemen, you are dis to disregard Mr. Ship's direct comment to the defendant, Mr. Ship. I'm please, sorry, I'm you're sorry, instructed sir. not to do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please disregard that. All right, they all nod in agreement. Uh, no, I did not. Isn't it true, sir, that when you left the Simpson home, you left and walked Kathy Randa out to her car? Like I said, I was there a whole week. I don't know if it was that night or I've walked a lot of people to their cars. That well, think hard. June 13th. No, I walked myself to the car. You didn't walk Kathy Randa to Kathy Randa's car on June, on June 13th? 13th. No, because I was so shaken up, shaken up. I remember I walked by myself and I, I, I sat in the car and I, I was by myself. I remember that because I was very tripped out over all this. Isn't it true, sir, that you and Kathy Randa walked out together from the first floor right out the house together and after you walked her to her car, you then got into your car and left? Not that night, no. Isn't it true, Mr. Ship, that because OJ withdrawn, you are aware that O.J. Simpson was very tired that evening, are you not? That's true. And you are aware that O.J. Simpson was very tired because he hadn't gotten much sleep the night before, true? True. Because he had taken a red eye from Los Angeles to Chicago, true? True. And then had taken a red eye or taken the first flight, six o'clock in the morning, from Chicago back to Los Angeles, correct? True. And then because he was on the phone so much, he did not sleep very much on the return flight from Chicago, correct? Correct. And as soon as he got back from Chicago, he was then handcuffed by police officers at his home, correct? From what I saw on the TV, yes. And then as soon as he got back from Chicago, he was taken down to Parker Center, correct? Correct. And after talking with Parker Center, he was then brought back to his house, correct? Correct. And then when he returned to his house, his friends, his family were there, correct? Correct. 
And since he hadn't slept for the past 24 hours or so, he went to bed early on June 13th, no, didn't he? Oh, well. You may answer the question. No, he did not. Isn't it true, sir, that Mr. Simpson didn't go to bed around 11 o'clock, but in fact he went to bed closer to 8 or 8.15 on June 13th, since he hadn't slept the prior night? Isn't that true? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I lost a train of thought. Go right ahead again. I'm sorry. Since Mr. Simpson hadn't slept the prior evening or earlier that day, he went to bed at about 8 or 8.15 on June 13th, didn't he? No, I did not. And isn't it true, sir, that his sister Shirley and his brother-in-law, uh, Benny Baker, escorted Mr. Simpson up to his room and helped him undress on June 13th? Isn't that correct? Is that what they're going to testify to, sir? <laughs> no, Your Honor, they're outside. That's not correct. That is not correct. My statement is not correct. It is not correct. And is... All right, thank you, Council. Mr. Douglas, you may continue. Thank you. Isn't it true, Mr. Ship, that from 8.15, the time that Mr. Simpson went to bed, throughout that entire evening, some member of his family sat with him in his room because he was so grief-stricken? That's not true. Shirley asked me to go stay with him. She didn't want O.J. to be alone. She said, you stay up there with him, Ron. Now, Mr. Ship, let me change the subject and talk about your friendship with Mr. Simpson. Were you and he close friends? I'd say we were pretty good friends. We didn't, never went out to dinner like on a regular basis and stuff like that. But Did you ever go out to dinner with him and you ever? Well, when he was trying to have me help him get back with Nicole, yeah, he was real. You and he went out to dinner? He took me out a, a couple of times. Where'd you go? Uh, one of the places was right next to his office. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the pizza place over there. You and he went alone to dinner? Oh, yeah. What month was that in? Whenever he, 1989, whenever, uh, um, the first week after he and Nicole had the altercation. When else did you and he ever go to dinner together? In the 26 years that you and he have been supposed friends. You know, Mr. Douglas, I'm sorry, you're, you're absolutely right. Okay, he, what he did, he took me out to, um, maybe it was a late brunch type, it wasn't a dinner, a late brunch type of a thing. You have never had a dinner in the presence of O.J. Simpson alone, have you? Yes, I have. O.J. Simpson is a football fan, isn't he? Pardon me? O.J. Simpson is a football fan, isn't he? Yeah, he loves football. Yes, he does. He goes to games a lot, yes, doesn't he, does. he? You and O.J. Simpson have never attended a football game together never. in the 26 years that he's been your supposed friend, have you? Not one. You and your wife have never gone on a double date with Nicole and O.J. Simpson in the entire time that you've known them, have you? You're absolutely correct. You and your wife and he and his ex-wife never went to a movie or a play or a concert together, the four of you, have you? My wife and I were invited shortly after he beat up Nicole. Movie Next. strike that, Your Honor. Non-responsive. Overruled. Your wife 
and you were invited, but you never went, did you? Never went. All the times that you claim that you were over his house playing tennis, you have never in your entire life played tennis on the same court with O.J. Simpson, have you? Never. You're not really this man's friend, are you, sir? Well, I, okay, to, all right. If you want me to, to really explain it, I guess you can say I was like everybody else, one of his servants. I did police stuff for him all the time. I ran license plates. That's what I was. Okay, I mean, I, like I said, I love the guy. You weren't the kind of friend that he would share some private secret with, were you, sir? Nothing except for the 1989 beating where he needed me. You know that Mr. Simpson is an avid golfer. True. Very true. You ever been golfing with him? Never. You ever asked to go with him? Never. I'm not that good. Ever been to a Raider game with him? Never. A Trojan game with him? Very well, you're on. Trojan game? On. Very well, I'll move on. When you got a hold of me. have had occasion to meet with members of the Brown family since the death of Nicole Brown Simpson, haven't you? Since the death? Yeah. Um, on one occasion. When was that? A memorial service for Nicole. Have you been down to Dana Point to speak with any of the family since then? No, I have not. Have you spoken with them on the phone other than on the day of the funeral? Oh, yes, I have. How many times have you spoken with anyone from the Brown family on the phone since the funeral until today? Maybe six. When was the last time? Maybe three weeks ago. Who'd you speak with? I spoke to both Lou and Judy. When was the first time? After the... Uh the deaths? Who did you speak with? No, I'm, I'm trying to clarify. After the deaths? Um, I remember I, I went probably, I didn't want to bother them, like, because they were being bothered. So I probably went maybe around two and a half, three months before I even called. I mean, I'd, I'd call, I'd, I called Rolf all the time, and I'd check on them through Rolf, and I'd ask them how they were doing. You've spoken with Denise Brown since her sister's death, have you not? Once at the memorial. Have you spoken with Dominique Brown since the death of her sister? Talked to her once, which was also that three week period, three weeks ago when, when she answered the phone. Did you talk to Tanya Brown at all since the death at of the her memorial. sister? I'm sorry? At the memorial. You mentioned there were six times or so that you've spoken to someone in the Brown family on the telephone. One time was with Lewis and Judith Brown. I talked to Lou a few times between, I mean, a few times I called and, and I'd ask to speak to Judy or she'd answer the phone and put Lou on the phone. Did you ever talk to anyone in the Brown family about this supposed conversation with you and Mr. Simpson about dreams? No, I did not. Who else have you told before talking to Mr. Darden and Mr. Van Adder? Who else did you talk to about these dreams? other than your wife, and other than Sheila Weller? Uh, my attorney, Bob McNeil. Okay. Robert McNeil, yeah. Robert McNeil, correct. Washington, Washington Boulevard office. Yeah. They moved, they moved your honor. Downtown. He's downtown, but he was on Washington, you're correct. You began the police force when, Mr. Ship? November 1974. And you were a member of the police force until when, Mr. Ship? October 1989. All right, let me see counsel over here at the sidebar with the report, please.
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry about the delay. Mr. Uh, Douglas, do you wish to uh, conclude for the afternoon? I would, I would, Your Honor, if I may. All right. When's the last time before June 13th, 1994, Mr. Ship, that you had occasion to visit the Rockingham location? Probably about a week before that. And that was when you visited there with some blonde female, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. Yes. I take it there's a, an objection? Yes. Relevancy? All right, Mr. Uh, Douglas, you may uh, wind it up for the afternoon, please. It is true, is it not, that about a week before the death of Nicole Brown Simpson, you visited Mr. Simpson's house unannounced at about 10 o'clock p.m. with a blonde female. True? No, that was approximately. You know, I, I, you know, I objected to this question. I thought the court sustained No, a rule. You may answer. But with some, but not very broad here. Very well. No, the night that the blonde female was over, that was three weeks before, who was a good friend of my wife, and we were good friends with her husband. Her name is Lisa Madigan. That was three weeks prior was to... That, is she about six foot one, no, resembling she's, Nicole Simpson? No, she, she's... I'm sorry. She's about... Um, this is about 5'9", almost 5'10". Was this the woman who you wanted to share the jacuzzi with? The fact that he was over there three or four weeks ago, well, that's, that's about it that's relevant, counsel. Very well. When you were there on this occasion, did you ask Mr. Simpson to go and bring you some wine? That's correct. You drink a lot, don't you? I used to. You've had a drinking problem, haven't you? Yeah, in the past, I have. We can stop now, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our recess for the afternoon. Mr. Ship, I'm going to direct you to come back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Don't discuss your testimony with anybody else except for the lawyers in the case. All right? Let's have it quiet in the courtroom, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please remember my admonition to you. Mr. Ship, you can step down. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember my admonition to you. Don't discuss the case amongst yourselves. Form any opinions about the case. Have any contact with anybody from the outside allow anybody to contact you, and we will see you back here hopefully bright and early 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. All right, have a pleasant evening. All right, let's uh, clear the courtroom for the jury, please. For conflict. I'm sure he would not do it, but I ask his name be taken off. And I will further call his office and let, it, let him know that his name is off, off the list. All right. And Mr. Uh, Simpson... It's my understanding that Mr. Robert McNeil has not represented you. He has not appeared on the record in this case thus far. That's my understanding. Is that correct? All right. And you understand what the problem is? All right. Great. Okay. All right. One other thing. Uh, Ms. Clark, I need to do some planning about our visits out in the field. Can you tell me when you might be planning that? Yes, ma'am. I anticipated that we would ask for a jury viewing of Bundy. 
just um, just after the first officer on the scene testifies, that will come up. I'm reviewing the witness list. That will come up after the testimony of the witnesses from Mezzaluna. And that, so, we'll have, um, it's not going to come up until after all the testifying. How long is this going to take? We talking a couple weeks? Very, uh, I think so. I think so. Okay. Then, um, counsel, would you, would each side, each side has agreed that this is something necessary, the view of the scene, both at Bundy and Rockingham, uh, both during the daylight hours and uh, again at night. And my proposal was that we go there once in the daylight hours uh, at the beginning of the case and then towards the end of the case go back again uh, during uh, nighttime hours, which may get us right about June. So we may even get the right time and moon and sun and the stars and all of the above. Um, the sheriffs are putting together a uh, travel itinerary and uh, we of course have to form a uh, press pool uh, to go along with us otherwise they'll hound us and um, the itinerary that they have planned so far is Bundy, drive by Mezzaluna and then up to Rockingham roughly although they have a secret route Okay, but if you want, would you give me the itinerary of what you think we need to do and then, because I'll have to plan how long it's going to take us. We can't all go through these places together. It'll probably have to be, because of the narrowness of some of these places, maybe three or four at a time, escorted by deputies, um, et cetera. Did you say, Ms. Clark, when that would be? I thought at best two, two weeks, probably longer. All right. Uh, and we do Rockingham and Bundy on the same day. Because we need to, of mm -hmm. course, uh, we need to advance regarding Rockingham, so everything's also available. I think we're going to take care of Bundy. Right, we'll take care of take Bundy, care but I wasn't anticipating doing them both on the same day, Your Honor. I'd rather than take all the trips, I'd like to do Rockingham and Bundy on the same day, at least during the daylight hours. Makes sense. I think it makes sense to do it all at once because they're all within relatively close proximity. Then if we go back at night, we can do them both at night. Uh, make three different trips out. Right. Yeah, very important, Your Honor. Are we, let me just ask one other thing. Are we going to need to see the interior of the Bundy address? Is there any reason that we need to go in there? I really, at this time, don't think so, Your Honor. Um, but the court has asked me to... Um, you think so? Yes, I think so. I think absolutely. For what, what's the relevance? There's quite a bit of relevance. Uh, in this instance, we're... we're Actually, if we, get to, if we get to the 90s... No, but that was at Gretna Green. That was Gretna Green. Green. Gretna Green. No, but I still think it's very relevant, Your Honor because of all the things that the LPD didn't do along the way. So I think it's very relevant. Uh, not only see the outside, but the inside, where the children were, and that sort of thing. It becomes very relevant, because we have these witnesses uh, testifying about things that they heard. OK. Well, what I'm, what I'm asking is, why don't you put each side put together a list of what it is you want to see? Mm -hmm. And then, because the sheriffs have to know timing-wise how long it's going to take us to do all of this sure. for planning. And I, I would like to be heard on the subject matter of going, taking the jury inside the Bundy Residence. Um. Yeah, we'll think about it. Okay. Madam, I'm not going to fight about it if we don't have to, but it doesn't seem relevant to me at this time. Yeah. I mean, if we're there and something comes I up. I think it's very relevant, and I'll talk to Mr. Clark. Okay. I'll talk to John, I'd like to inquire uh, of the people. Now that we're finally in trial, and Ms. Clark said something the other day about them concluding that case within four to six weeks. I, I think I heard that from somebody. I, I'd like to get a realistic estimate because. We're kind of in a situation where we'd like, I'd like to know how long this trial is going to take. And, uh, may I just say? Let me, let me suggest this to you and Ms. Clark. Why don't you all, since you, we have some additional time this afternoon, why don't you sit down 
and formally chart out in blocks where it is you think you're going to be in the next couple of weeks. And I think there's something we can represent to you, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Olson, I thought you were leaving. Your Honor, that he should be, that council should be ready to proceed at the beginning of April, um, giving extra lag time for things that may occur, like illnesses, um, excessive amounts of. That's two beepers I own. Take it. Deputy McNair, would you take Mr. Darden's take beeper, please? Oh, geez, you didn't take these other people's beepers and Mr. Bailey's. No, I right. said any other electronic devices. I took one from uh, Court TV last week. That's two I have now. Take it, take it, take it. It's a beaver company since it's a free beaver. A new one, a better model. A <laughs> cellular beaver. Taking the cut. A digital. <laughs> How is Ms. Clark going to get in contact with me tonight? Your Honor, you have, you have just hamstrung the prosecution in a very serious way. It's life in the big city, Ms. Clark. Oh. You are, Mr. Darden. <laughs> <laughs> you may thank me for that, Mr. Darden. All right. End of April? No, beginning, beginning of April. April. Um, and I'm giving some, this is very approximate. I don't know how long cross is going to be. It's very hard for counsel, for Mr. Cochran and myself, to estimate the DNA uh, length of time for those hearings, uh, you know, that testimony. So uh, this is a very rough estimate, and I can't, please don't hold me to this. You know, right. I'm, I'm doing the best I can, but I, I really don't know. And, and cross does vary. I, I'm unable to predict how long they'll go. So. When do you anticipate we'll see? Uh, Mr. Uh, Hodgman back, if and when. I don't know, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Council, anything else? I think that we would try to shoot for April 1st on the beginning of the defense case, Your Honor. Give or take, as you said, the DNA. It's going to be interesting. Your Honor, is it possible, I have a brief, brief hearing tomorrow morning. Is it possible that we could have, it's going to start at 8.30. Is it possible we can start at 9.15 tomorrow? It's down in Department 111. Apparently, they held it today and Nine. Ms. Clark, do you agree with that request? She won't be able to then anyway, Your Honor, so it's okay. So it works out <laughs> I knew fine. he'd say that. I knew he was going to say it. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 915. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, counsel, thank you.